a 125 cc motorcycle on the drivers up channel have we lost it not really you see the last time we tested a motorcycle for its performance in the 125 cc segment it was the bajaj pulsar ns 125 and we really thought that that was the sportiest 125 cc motorcycle in the segment however this hero extreme 125r plans on changing that entire narrative so to find out if it's actually any good or not we have brought it to raftar which is pune's latest and greatest go kart track and it's a wet day so we are going to be pushing it to the extreme let's find out how it fares The first thing you'll notice of the Extreme 125R is just how large the bike is for a 125 cc bike. That is good news for tall people because you will be more comfortable on the bike and normal people also because you will have a sensation that it is a larger motorcycle under your bum. The other nice things about the motorcycle is just how the tank hugs your thighs and it's really comfortable and I also like the way it actually looks. One thing I don't like the way it looks is these tank shrouds i think they protrude a bit too far away from the motorcycle which uh, make it look a bit too desperate the other nice things are this complete finish uh, from the bottom of the chassis towards the subframe which makes it look like a singular piece but if you drop the bike that could be an added expense however overall the bike looks really nice and it looks much bigger than a 125 cc motorcycle which could be appealing to quite a lot of people swing your leg over the saddle and the hero extreme 125r is a rather comfortable motorcycle that i would place in that goldilocks zone of not too sporty and not too relaxed because the upper body is slightly committed and you've got more than enough leverage to move your body and your head around and the lower half your foot peg is not that front forward that you're going to have a completely straight leg you still need to uh, put your foot slightly back which is in line with your body and that's pretty much that sweet spot where you can move your body around the motorcycle on a track like this and also be pretty comfortable in day to day traffic so it is in a very perfect spot where the bike seems friendly on road and even on the track talking about the engine this is a glamour 125 engine but it has been heavily worked on the head is completely different and uh, the intake as well is completely different so now it makes 11 ps and 11 newton meters of torque the way it delivers it is very interesting it has decent low end grunt and the torque is available down in the rev range which makes it really easy to ponder around town in higher gears but when it comes to the track and pushing the engine and seeing what it's like in the higher revs it's super linear the fueling is perfect and it's very gentle so chopping the throttle a little bit or being a slightly aggressive in the throttle during transitions it is uh, not biting you in the ass that combined with a really friendly chassis a very nice suspension setup and a uh, really good brakes in the front at least this bike aims to be a really nice bike on track let's see how that actually is
As I mentioned earlier, when it comes to pushing the bike, the engine feels comfortable to rev high. But since it is still a commuter-centric motorbike, most of that grunt comes at the bottom end of the rev range. But it's progressive, making it feel well settled when you whack the throttle open on the exit. At a technical track like Raftar though, what really shined was the chassis. The Hero Extreme 125R excels in handling, thanks to its lightweight chassis and well-tuned suspension. The telescopic front forks and rear monoshock provide a balanced and stable ride even on uneven roads. The bike's ergonomics are well thought out, with a comfortable seating position and adequately cushioned seat, ensuring rider comfort over long distances. It's not too upright though. The ever so slightly forward leaning rider's position gives you a decent amount of space to move while exploring the limits of the extreme. It leans into corners smoothly, which gives a lot of confidence during turn in. Mind you, the chassis really compensated for the lack of grip from the MRF steel braided tyres, especially in the rain when you try to push it to its extreme. No pun intended. Talking about its competition, the Pulsar NS125 is the only thing that I think could go toe to toe with the Extreme 125R, in my opinion. Both motorcycles cater to the same audience with the NS125 being a bit more raw when it comes to performance. It's more aggressive and it packs a bit more punch but the Extreme is lighter and friendlier making it feel like it could easily keep up with the NS. The other premium 125 in the segment is the TVS Raider which also seems like a good buy in this segment but we can't say anything about its performance without having ridden it. Overall, the Extreme brings some decent performance to the table in this segment, making it a great option for someone that would like to add some fun to their commute. After a really fun couple of sessions in the wet at Raftar, I'm really happy with how the motorcycle performs. In terms of dynamics, the Extreme 125R has nothing extreme about it and that's very good news. It's a friendly motorcycle that lets you make mistakes, lets you be aggressive and it will compensate for all of your tomfoolery, which is very good news for a beginner because this motorcycle is intended for them. And if you are in the market, for something that is sporty but still don't want to break bank at 99,500 rupees ex showroom this is extremely fun and that's my take on the extreme 125r do let us know your thoughts on what you think about the 125r and let us know down in the comments below i'll see you guys in the next one see you